Finkler had asked for it. That was Tyler Finkler's view at the time, and it was Julian's, and it was Treslov's too. Sam Finkler had it coming. Tyler Finkler had the better case. Her husband was fucking other women. Or if he wasn't fucking other women, he might as well have been fucking other women for the amount of attention he was showing her. Treslov's case was simply that Finkler had it coming because he was Finkler. But he also saw that a woman as beautiful as Tyler shouldn't have to suffer. Tyler Finkler. The late Tyler Finkler. Remembering her over a second coffee, Treslov sighed a deep sigh. Sam's on an all-consuming project, he had said at the time. He's an ambitious man. He was an ambitious boy. My husband was a boy. Treslov had smiled weakly. Finkler had not, in fact, been much of a boy, but he didn't feel right in saying so to Finkler's angry wife. They were lying on Treslov's bed in that suburb he insisted on calling Hampstead, but that wasn't quite Hampstead. <laughs> they should not have been lying on Treslov's bed in any suburb. They both knew that, but Finkler had asked for it. Tyler had rung Treslov originally to inquire whether it was all right to come over and watch the first program of her husband's new series on Treslov's television. Of course, he had said, but won't you be watching it with Sam? Samuel is watching it with the crew, otherwise known as his mistress. Tyler was the only person who still called Sam Samuel. It gave her power over him, the power of someone who knew an important person before he became an important person. Sometimes she went further and called him Shmuley to remind him of his origins when he appeared to be in danger of forgetting them. Oh, Treslov said. And the worst thing is, Tyler went on, she isn't even the fucking director. She's just the fucking production assistant. Ah, Treslov said, wondering if Tyler would have been watching it with Sam had Sam more conventionally been fucking the director. You never quite knew where you were with Finklers, men or women, when it came to matters that bore on humiliation and prestige. Non-Finklers judged all infidelities equally, but in his experience, Finklers were prepared to make allowances if the third party happened to be someone important. Prince Philip, Bill Clinton, the Pope even. He hoped he wasn't stereotyping Finklers, thinking that. Will you be bringing the children, Treslov asked. The children? The children are away at school. They'll soon be at university. At least pretend to take an interest, Julian. I don't do children, he explained. I don't even do my own. Well, you don't have to worry. We won't be doing any children ourselves. My body is past all that. Oh, said Treslov. This was the first inkling he had that he and his friend's wife would not be watching much television that evening. Huh he said to himself, showering, as though he were the victim of whatever was going to happen rather than an active partner in it. But there was never the remotest possibility that he would be able to resist Tyler, no matter that she was using him only to get her own back on her husband. Though she wasn't the sort of woman he normally fell for, he had fallen for her anyway the first time Sam had introduced her as his wife. The newly married Mrs. Finkler was not in fact beautiful, but she was as good as beautiful dark and angular, with features on which a careless man could cut himself, and pitiless, sarcastic eyes. Though there was little meat on her bones, she was somehow able to suggest sumptuous occasion, the sort of woman a successful man needs, competent, worldly, coolly elegant, so long as the man doesn't forget her in his success. The word humid came to Treslov's mind when he thought about Tyler Finkler's body, which was surprising given that she was on the surface arid. But Treslov was imagining what she would be like below the surface when he entered her dark, womanly mysteriousness. She was somewhere he had never been and probably ought not to think of going. She was the eternal Finkler woman. Hence there never being the remotest possibility of his refusing her when she offered. He had to discover what it would be like to penetrate the moist, dark, womanly mysteriousness of a Finkleress. <laughs> they put the television on, but didn't watch a frame of Sam's program. He's such a liar, she said, stepping out of a dress she could have worn to see Sam get his knighthood. 
Where's his philosophy when I don't have his dinner ready on time? Where's his philosophy when he should be keeping his dick in his pants? Treslov said nothing. It was odd having his friend's face on his television at the same time as he had his friend's wife in his arms. Not that Tyler was ever actually in his arms. She liked to be made love to from a distance, as though it wasn't really happening. Much of the time she lay facing away from Treslov, working on his penis with her hand behind her back, as though fascinating a complicated brassiere or struggling with a jar that wouldn't open. <laughs> All the time traducing her husband in running commentary. She preferred the light on and saw no sensual virtue in silence. Only when he entered her, briefly, because she told him she did not welcome extended intercourse. <laughs> did Treslov find the warm, dark, Finkleresque humidity he had anticipated, and it exceeded all his imaginings.